Now picture this. It's an early warm morning. The spray of seawater is about, and the nervous faces looking around each other for comfort. This is the sight that would have unfolded on an LCVP, or Landing Craft Vehicle Personnel, also known as the Higgins Boat, over countless naval landings in the Second World War. To get to the famous LCVP, we must rewind the time back to 1926, where its creator, Andrew J. Higgins, got his start. He designed the Eureka Boat, which was a shallow draft boat that had a propeller recess so the boat could operate in shallow waters. Originally, it was intended for the Gulf of Mexico to be utilized by trappers and oil drillers, and possibly used throughout the Prohibition era to keep the booze flowing down south. Then, with the actions of Germany and Japan, another world war was on the horizon. For it was in the late 1930s that Navy and Marine Corps observers witnessed the Japanese landing craft, the Dahatsu class, in the Second Sino-Japanese War. The Marines were then looking for a better method of delivering itself by amphibious landings. The Navy's internal design branch at the time could not deliver any impressive results. With their LCPL, it was found to be adequate for disembarking, however it provided little in terms of protection for troops as they disembarked. Andrew Higgins was then shown a picture of these crafts by Navy observers, and he was then inspired to produce his own landing craft. It should be noted, he did the original designs and tests with his own funding, as well as he had employees act as troops being delivered upon beaches. On May 26, 1941, representatives for the Navy Bureau of Ships and the Marine Corps' Equipment Board witnessed these tests and were impressed. Higgins was now a key player in the war. The early variant was the LCPR, which was used in North Africa, Guadalcanal, Parawa, and Salerno. However, this one was made entirely out of wood and offered little protection for its occupants. It was promptly upgraded and armored and redesignated as the LCVP. Now, on to some statistics from the LCVP. These aren't the most impressive, but what is, they got the job done well. It was constructed from wood, with steel armor on the exterior hull sides, and a steel bow ramp that also acted as frontal protection for its occupants. Now, they either came with a diesel or gasoline engine based on what components were available at the time, although the diesel was the most popular. The diesel engine was the Gray Marine 671 diesel engine. Outputted 225 horsepower. Or, the gasoline engine was the Hall Scott, which outputted 250 horsepower. Maximum speed was 12 knots or 14 miles per hour. The length was 35 feet and 9 inches with a width of 10 feet 6 inches. Its capacity was 36 troops, 4 crew, with the crew being a coxswain, an engineer, a bowman, and a sturman. It could also be used to transport light vehicles or up to 8,100 pounds of cargo. Its armaments were two M1919 30 caliber Browning machine guns. Throughout the duration of the war, over 23,000 would be produced. The LCVP saw extensive use in both the European and the Pacific theater of war. In battles such as D-Day in Normandy, Crossing of the Rhine, Iwo Jima, and Okinawa. After the war, it saw further usage in the Korean War, as well as by some of America's allies. I would like to include the following quote, as I believe it emphasizes the role the LCVP played in the war. I personally equate its impacts to the M1 Grand the U.S. Army and Marines carried. President Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, Andrew Higgins is the man who won the war for us. If Higgins had not designed and built those LCVPs, we never could have landed on an open beach. The whole strategy of the war would have been different. This quote, and the countless landings that the LCVP has conducted throughout its service life, are the reasons why it's one of the most notable vehicles of the Second World War. Higgins Industries went on to produce over 60 different items for the U.S. government during the war. Various items such as the LCVP, PT boats, and life rafts, as well as many different variants of naval crafts. Andrew Higgins himself died of a stomach ailment at the age of 65 on August 1st, 1952. Today, there are very few of these crafts remaining despite its vast production numbers, as many were modified post-war or even just scrapped. However, if you live near one of the museums that have an authentic or even a replica LCVP, I highly encourage you to visit to and see this monumental craft in person. That's going to wrap up another video. As always, if you have any feedback or videos that you would like to see, please leave it down below. I just want to say thank you everyone for the support recently. I've been getting a lot of subscribers and a lot of likes. Um, a lot of positive comments as well. I really appreciate it all. I think I'm about to hit 30 at this moment, which is a big number to me. It's basically like a whole classroom filled. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get there to we'll be like a whole college lecture size. That'd be pretty cool. Anyways, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.